So here we are with the unbox of the Insta360 Flow AI powered smartphone stabilizer. As for color options, the unit I have here is going to be stone gray, but the other option would be summit white. Now, personally, I would have liked to see a black option as those two color options appear a bit similar. I also noticed that these color names seem to vibe a bit with nature. So we could have had a black option called lava rock black or something similar. Opening the package is smooth with the lid being secured by magnetism which opens wide enough to get a good view of the Insta360 Flow, as well as directions for setup steps and gimbal grip positions. Also, a small side note, we have a QR code next to the Insta360 Flow for access and tutorials and downloading the app. Removing the flap from on top of the Insta360 Flow gives us a better view of the unit itself as well as a small package on the side which includes all other accessories. This means that overall contents will include the Insta360 Flow, magnetic phone clamp, grip cover, Type-C to A charge cable, protective pouch, quick start guide, and warranty card. Now again, the Insta360 Flow Kit does ship with a protective cover, but it doesn't provide any hard shell protection. So I actually found this case on Amazon, which should keep our Insta360 Flow protected. And it actually fits perfectly into this unit. We also have this elastic strap, which will hold it more securely. So we can grab our Insta360, slide it right underneath the strap. This is a perfect fit and then we can actually close the case here and this zips up nice and smooth and this case is also available in different colors to suit your taste so let's talk more about the insta 360 flow right away you'll notice it's transparent casing which allows you to see the inside semiconductor and wiring as well as the insta 360 branded battery now before we go into more details about the Insta360 Flow, we do have the foam clamp to cover. Now this is going to be important because you want to make sure that the foam clamp is installed on your device correctly or else it could affect performance when using the whole kit together later on. So if we take a closer look at the clamp, you'll see there is a label that indicates the orientation the clamp should be in in relationship to our device. So let's slide that clamp over. We're going to grab our Z Fold 4. And then we're going to be careful that when we take the clamp, we don't flip it upside down, which is what I did previously here. So I am learning from my past mistakes. And the clamp goes on the Z Fold 4 nicely. And keep in mind that the Z Fold 4 is a fairly thick device of course thicker than a majority of other devices on the market so if this fits the z fold 4 well it should work really good for other devices as well and now we can secure the clamp to the insta 360 flow which is done with magnetism now when i first heard this i was a bit concerned because i use larger heavier devices like the z fold 4 or the s23 ultra and i wasn't sure how this was going to work but this is a popular concept for attachment of these two pieces with other stabilizer kits. So we are going to line up here and attach. And this magnet is really strong. It's always hard to explain these things in video. But you can see that the Insta360 Flow Stabilizer is being held up onto that clamp by itself. There's my two hands. I'm not holding the Insta360 Flow and we can actually pick up the whole kit here and again the z fold 4 is a thick heavy device and the clamp and the insta360 flow can hold it with no issues and just a small note when installing the insta360 flow to the clamp you'll see that we have this little notch here those both need to be aligned so that you get the best magnetism so that this kit doesn't randomly separate on you. So let's talk booting up the Insta360 Flow. Now this device looks really cool, but it has some cool functionality built into it. Now the first thing is going to be what Insta360 calls the one-step rapid deploy, 
which basically boots up this whole assembly automatically once you unfold it. And this is done by holding this handle in the correct orientation, which takes a little bit of time to get used to, and then unfolding this portion of the unit. And as you can see, it automatically boots up, it flips the phone into the correct orientation. And if you were listening, we had that cool little beep sound. I thought this was a nice addition because it adds to the experience. It makes this device feel truly futuristic. Now there are some really good in-depth tutorials once you have the Insta360 app downloaded. And when it comes to turning the whole unit off, all you have to do is fold it back up. You can see that the phone automatically rotates back down and you could just put this conveniently in this position. Now, the most important thing is you're going to want to make sure that that clamp that holds the phone is oriented the right way or that your phone is oriented the correct way in the mount there or else when this all boots up, your camera will be on the underside, which is fine if that's what you're looking to do for your framing of your shots. But if you want your camera module to be top side up, you wanna make sure you do install it in that clamp correctly, something that I learned. So let's talk controls and operation of the Insta360 Flow. Again, you'll see that it unfolds really quick due to that one-step rapid deploy system. And the Insta360 Flow also connects quickly to the Insta360 app that was the white box that you may have seen on the display. Now we occasionally get this yellow message which says mobile phone is not centered. Please adjust the position of the magnetic phone clamp. And I believe this is due to the fact that we're using the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 which is a thick and heavy device. So I believe this device is pushing the Insta360 flow to its limits. But if we zoom in here, we are going to talk about our controls here, which will be located on the grip. And we're going to start with the joystick, which is in the center there. So if we move it one way or the other, we'll get left and right rotation. And if we move down or up, we're going to get up and down rotation. So that's really going to help you get a nice smooth angle there as you are framing your shot. Taking a closer look, we have these two arrows that appear to be moving in a circular formation. And that is a button action that if we press on the dial, it's going to activate. And that's going to let us switch between our cameras, whether we're trying to do a selfie recording or a recording of a subject. And if we press the button twice, it's going to make the Insta360 automatically rotate the camera. I think that is really cool. It works really well and it's also really smooth. And then if we press the same button three times, we are going to switch either between photo or recording or video. And then there's also room for gestures on this control. So if we do a complete swipe, that's going to allow us to go in two different modes. So to give you an idea of the modes, we have FPV, we have pan follow, we have follow, and then we have auto. Now one feature I didn't know about until just recently is that this whole control is actually a rotatable dial. And if we rotate one way and take a look at the camera, it's going to change our zoom. If we rotate the other way, it's going to go back to the original one we had. And then we have this red circle button. And as you can imagine, that is for recording video, but it's also for taking pictures. So we are in video mode. So if we press that record button, that's going to start our recording. And if we switch to photo mode, that is going to allow us to take a picture. And then we have this trigger on the rear of the handle for the Insta360 Flow, which has several functions. So I'm going to intentionally change the angle of my phone using the joystick, which articulates this whole robotic-like assembly. And if we press this trigger twice, 
it's going to reset our phone to a more neutral position. Now, if we get a better grip on the handle and we press that trigger three times, it's going to rotate this whole assembly around, which works nice and smooth. Now, again, you wanna get a good grip on the handle because of the force here. The force is kind of strong and if you aren't gripping the handle very well, you may drop all of this kit here. And we're going to rotate the camera back around and then if we press and hold the trigger, it's going to lock out everything. Now, along with these features that are built into the controls, we also have some more functionality. So we actually have an extended grip here. If we pull on one of the tabs that you see at the bottom, that's going to release our extended grip. That's actually useful because you can hold the Insta360 flow a little bit better without interfering with the controls if you had the grip shorter. Now, along with this, we also have a tripod built into this extended grip. So if we pull down on these tabs a little bit more, and then we spread the legs, that's going to give us a nice tripod setup which works really well now folding up the tripod is easily done by placing all the legs in the center again and then we can push the extended grip right back into the insta360 flow but one little thing i wanted to mention as i push the tripod pieces back into the extended grip is that if you rest the extended grip on a surface like i'm doing now you can see that it kind of just drops right back into the Insta360 flow. I did try to see if maybe the extended grip locks out, but it doesn't appear to do so. So keep in mind if you're resting like this for support, the extended grip may go away. But along with those features, we also have a selfie stick included, which is a bit tough to release. It's got very good resistance but it pulls out if you do want a longer setup here. I will say it does make holding the whole kit a bit more challenging, but it is there if you do want it. And then if we take a look at the base of the Insta360 Flow, you can see that we have some threads in there. Those are going to be common threads, so we can install the Insta360 Flow on another tripod. So let's give this a try. We're screwing on here, and there we go. We have the Insta360 Flow mounted to a tripod. So that is it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, keep in mind, I will be creating more content about this device as I use it. Now, there are three ways to support the content. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. We also have some really cool list on there in order for you to create the ultimate loadout. So make sure you check it out. The next way you can show your support is by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way you can show your support is by clicking the subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are important because those are your ways to vote on whether you like the content. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful worth watching and listening to. And as always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon checking out.